there's a lot of moments where like people will just be scared and let me pressure for too long and then their barrier gauge is gone and once your barrier gauge is totally gone and you can't block against troll you're just you're dead <laughs>
uh, that's why like his run speed and his walk speed and his air movement is so slow. And a lot of his normals have a lot of recovery. And uh, what's supposed to offset that is that he has these disjointed hitboxes on very long normals that hit in very strange spots. All right, what is your what is your favorite move of Amane's and why? Jump to B. It, it, it's a surprising answer probably, uh, but uh, long story short, you can do this. Ah, fuck. <laughs> is that it's a little hard but does that go infinite or is there a limit no uh there is a combo timer in this game to help prevent infinites from happening so no character has a true infinite gotcha so this will get to about 13 hits before it's forced to stop uh but this move is incredibly useful because unlike most jump attacks it doesn't have lanyard recovery so you can immediately act uh, and it also works as a safe jump against dragon punches. Oh. And also like a throw tech bait, run up bait that you throw, and then you counter hit them with jump 2B. Or use it as part of your air neutral to make your movement extremely unpredictable. Or uh, you can use it as like a jank cross up and catch them off guard like that. So it's a really cool versatile move. That's sick. And Oh, wait, so that one doesn't hit overhead, though? Nope. That's insane. That's <laughs> that's super weird. So it, it just catches mid, I guess. It's like... Yep. Okay. Yeah, because I was about to say, like... That would, I feel like that alone would throw me off, that it's not hitting me overhead. I feel like that... Like, if someone did that and it didn't hit me and I was crouching, I'd be like, wait a minute, what? And I'd, like, let go of the controller and die. I don't know. That seems crazy that those don't hit overhead. But. Yeah, I play against a lot of characters that when I go in with something like this, they just block it overhead because they don't understand. Nope, nothing's overhead. Really nothing. Yeah, can you get like funky with that since it doesn't have landing recovery and like go straight into a low that like they stood for pointlessly? Like, can you can you kind of mix up that way? Does that ever work? Oh yeah, I absolutely do that. Or like I'll pretend I'm jumping in, then I'll just end it early. Go for a low. Or uh while they're waking up. Oh god. Yeah, I'll faint like I'm gonna, gonna force them to block something and then throw. That's yeah. sick. It's a very tricky move. I like it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, surprisingly, my favorite attack does not dr use drill. <laughs> that would have been too easy of an answer anyway. Yeah, too easy, too obvious. <laughs> Well, let's uh let's talk about the drive a little more in depth. So, like the the five D drive is the drill straight out in front, right? But aren't there there are some variants to how you can use the drill, right? Yeah, he has a this is five D obviously. He also has two D, which it's up. Is that good? Is that like a good anti air option? It is a situational anti air. Okay. I think the character that it's best against is Tager. Because he has like a uh, an air attack, I think it's like jump two C, where he like swings his hands down and lets him like float up in the air longer than normal. So if you do jump two D, uh, I'm sorry, if you just do two D, you can hold it, which lets it stay out longer. Uh, its downside is it has no like uh, head invulnerability like most other anti airs in this game do. So if they just do a jump in, they'll still hit you. So you have to do it like preemptively. It's mostly because it's so big that it's a good anti-air. I'm noticing you gaining drill meter without actually like hitting. It's just from doing the moves at all. Yep. As long as you hold it, you gain it. But you gain more if you're hitting them. Gotcha. Like uh, 60, for example, is the primary way that you want to gain drill meter. And like it gains a little bit on whiff, but it gains a absolute ton on hit. Jeez. That's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I saw you overload there on the 6D too. I guess we should probably talk about yeah. that at some point. Yeah, the other thing to mention is that if you gain too much drill meter while you're in level 3, you will overload and go all the way back down to level 1. So you want to try and stay in like the mid-range of 3 because you lose drill gauge really quickly. So you want to constantly pressure to try and keep it in that perfect spot. That makes sense. Okay, so we've got uh, five D, 
2d60. Any other variants? Yeah. Yep. He has uh, two air drills. This is a jump 60. This is primarily used in combos. Uh, which once you have level 2 and level 3, you can follow up after it really easily. And that's where he gets like a, a, his biggest damage. And his last one is jump D. And this is actually like incredibly good for pressure because you can cancel it with Zeto and keep going in. Jeez. Because there's so many different variances in how you can cancel your pressure. This lets you reset pressure. It can be a frame trap and you're gaining drill gauge the entire time. Oh man. And I don't know, it kind of counts as a drill, sort of. This will just let him gain charge. It's a Hurricane. Uh, while he's in Hurricane stance, he gains his gauge. And uh, he also can uh, do a follow-up drill that plants it on the ground. Uh, there's A that gets close, B that does mid-screen, and the C version goes completely full screen. Uh, and it also hits low. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of options. Oh, yeah, and he technically has a super as well. That does drill. And that uh, that super maxed out your meter right there. Does it? Yep. It just hit his level three no matter what. Yep. Uh, other super also disables your meter, so no matter where you are. Like they uh, they're all more powerful the higher drill gauge that you have, but you need to make sure that you like you kill them or you set up into something to give you time to get drill back. So yeah, let's uh let's talk about neutral game. So, you know, we covered that Amana can fill some space, and he's also got some disjointed, weird hitboxes. Um, mm -hmm. How do you approach neutral with this character? So yeah, uh, each matchup is gonna play fairly different in that regards because characters in this game are so different and so zany. But right. typically, uh, in neutral, you want to stay in Amane's. Uh, sweet spot zones where he can hit with his uh, various disjointed normals and pressure that way. Or just do all these different like formations. If you once you go into like this range, like this is the worst range for Amane because uh his normals don't really connect with them. That great. Uh and then characters like Jin, for example, uh, will outrange you usually. Uh, and plus, these normals have really long recovery. So the further away you are when you use them, like if you whiff, at least they can't punish you for doing it. So yeah, uh, I like to try to play from a well-spaced game until I can force them to block something and then get my way in and start running my pressure. So it almost kind of works out like a hybrid like zoning and rush down game plan a mm -hmm. little bit. Yeah, there's very few characters in this game that are pure zoning. It's like a new 13 mostly. Uh, most of the other characters with like a zoning oriented strategy still have like good ways to initiate offense and to run pressure or mix up. And Amani's no exception. Gotcha. Are any of the... Uh... Any of his special moves particularly useful in a neutral situation? This one is probably the main one, for sure. Uh, this is called Zeto. It's a uh, quarter circle, forward or back, A or B. The A version keeps you kind of low to the ground, and the B version makes you go a lot higher. Using these allows you to vary your uh, momentum, and like it keeps your... like what you're doing, where you're going to go, very uh, uncertain, very confusing. You want to use it to either try and get yourself in position for a good normal or to bait out an anti-air. Like, force it to whiff, so then you can whiff punish it. Uh, his air momentum is probably the best part of his neutral, because there's very few characters who have so much control over the options that they have. Yeah, I was just thinking when you were showing that the command jump that it really does, like, this kit really reads as a whiff punishy kit to me. Like, you really want to, it seems like you'd want to bait something out and then slap them for 
making a mistake there. Mm -hmm. What about the, the drills out of stance? Does that come up in neutral yeah. very often? Yeah, it does for sure. Uh, yeah, I, you can, uh, especially when you get to like level three of your drill meter, it's good to try and force them to block any of your drills. So like right there, that'll deal like 10 to 15% of champ damage on its own if they don't barrier block it. Uh, so it is good for catching out things, or you can put out your closer mid-screen drill. Especially at level three, it stays out much longer than two or one, and it gives you a zone where like they can't really approach you. Because if they try to jump over it, and like you can block it and barrier push block to force them back Whoa, into the drill. That's devious. <laughs> mm -hmm. like I've that. also like I've done in the past. Like if they've jumped over it, I've uh, done a counter assault to hit them into my drill. Oh my gosh. That's uh, and I here. almost forgot that this special exists. This is a Gekiden 63C. It is uh, an air unblockable. So That's if fun. they're in the air and in range, they get scooped no matter what. Does that uh, a, does it only pop up at that full screen range, like full yep. screen three quarters, something like that? Yeah, this is like the only thing that they really nerfed in this current version. It used to go completely full screen range, but now it only goes about three quarters. So you have to run up a bit if you want to try and scoop them. But it's still pretty useful, especially if uh, you put out a drill and uh. It, they're completely full screen, so it doesn't quite reach them. They'll stay crouch blocked for a little, and then they'll try to be like, oh, I can get away from this. And then when they jump away, you scoop them. Can you do anything and, uh, out of the scoop, or is it mostly just like a knockdown situation? Uh, if you don't have meter, then you can only follow up on counter hit. If you have meter, then you can do Ooh. this. And it hits really push. hard. It hits for like 3.8 or something like that. Gotta love uh, the range on those buttons sometimes. Yeah, but if they are doing something like, for example, Arakune, if he's like jumping into the air and trying to summon a cloud, and you hit them with Geki Rain, it'll counter hit, and you can follow up without meter. Nice. If they're respecting you in neutral, you know, kind of giving you some breath so that they don't get caught by normals. Do you ever take time to charge the drill in neutral? Or... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Stance, uh, stance is the primary way to do that. Yep. So like uh, characters like say uh, Hakumin, who like have big normals that kind of outrange you, and like, uh, and Hakumin also has like counters, uh, and since all of your buttons hit mid, he'll just like do his six D and counter everything <laughs> or two uh, D rather. Uh, you can really just stay back and run away from him. And then while he's, if he's turtling, you can force him to do an option like, okay, I'm just going to get level three drill. And then if you block anything, you're taking 10% jib. So yeah, definitely big. The other thing about uh, this stance is that it actually has a projectile guard point. Ooh. Uh, so like, for example, Tager's spark bolt, if he does it from full screen, you just do this and absorb it. And it's like, haha, you did nothing. That's a that's pretty nice little perk there. Get some counter zoning going. There we go. Do you get extra drill if if you tank a projectile? No, 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 no. Oh man, that'd <laughs> be crazy if you got a little bump for it. Hey, you just get the satisfaction of beating their projectile. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it. We've talked a lot about the spacing and. Kind of staying away is there any like matchups specifically where you are more so choosing to get in rather than stay out like obviously you want to get in at some point in any matchup because the pressure is really powerful and you can chip them into oblivion but just curious if there's someone who like zones a little better and maybe you just want to like run straight into them off rip just out of curiosity i guess the closest to that would be new 13 but surprisingly you can contest new 13 even when it, and even with a full screen zoning, like her swords, if she chucks her drives at you, you can absorb some of them. Her normals actually go far enough, almost full screen, that uh you can contest against her. I guess the main example would be like if you read that she's doing a five D, you can Zettel over it to get in. But otherwise, he's actually pretty good at contesting most other zoning type characters in this game. 
Nuke 13 is the closest one, and it's... Like, you could definitely still uh, give her a run for her money. Gotcha. So this this kind of pick-your-moment game plan does work pretty universally, then? Yeah. The main downside of it is that uh, because you only hit in, like, specific areas, there's counterplay that, that they can do against it universally. Like, there's characters that can just run under your 5C, which really sucks. <laughs> And if you do 2C, they can just jump over it. Or if you don't space it correctly, then they can just run past that too. And the, you're in huge amounts of recovery, so it's a free punish. So even though it's like stable can work against everybody, it's still like tricky to always do the right option. Right. More so than someone like New 13 who's just like, here's 5D, don't be on the ground. <laughs> Let's talk about pressure. So, you know, we talked about it a little bit already. The drill uh, can chip them into oblivion. But let's let's go a little deeper. Um, let's say, you know, you got them to block something. You get to close the gap. You're going in. What are you doing to really make them sweat? How are you, like, sequencing what you're doing on pressure to be able to, you know, consistently play that game? Mm -hmm. Amane's pressure game is actually fascinating because there's a lot of counterplay that people can do to it. And even though it seems like mids dispensing uh there's a lot of variations that he can do to it so like your goal is definitely to like you want to get in and drill them as much as you can to build up your meter but people can counterplay it with a uh, barrier blocking to push you back really far and try to make one of your normals whiff and then they can hit you in the face uh so you want to Sometimes it's better to just Zeto to stay on top of them as much as you can. Just get in as at all costs. And uh, I really like using Hadiken as well, personally. Uh, Hadiken canceling your normals lets you do uh, strings that people won't expect. What so, was that tornado you just did? Oh yeah, this is Ginga. This is something that I really like to use for frame traps, especially when people push you back with barrier block. They want to, uh, you can either frame trap it by like, they think your pressure is done after your 3C and then you smack them with the tornado and can follow up, or they're just trying to hold up back to jump away. This isn't very good as like a, a zoning tool or anything because it doesn't go too far, but it is really good for pressure, I think. Uh, let me think. What are the other pressure things? His pressure is definitely a combination of, like, trying to counter barrier block with Zetel. Getting as much drill as you can. Trying to frame trap with as many different moves. And also, uh, playing around Dragon Punches is another big thing for Amane. Because, like, uh, Jin, he has a CDP, he has a meter DP. And he has a counter super, a bunch of different options. So sometimes instead of going in, you'll want to like Zeto out and do jump C to force them to block before going back in. Or maybe you'll Zeto out and then jump to B to see if he tries to anti-air you. And if he did and missed, counter hit. Does the, uh, yeah, you have it on Swift reset right now, but how efficient is Amane at taking away barrier meter? Like, can it he press through barrier meter, like, fairly quickly if they are choosing that option a lot? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the longer you get to pressure them, the more the more of the barrier that you drain. As you can see, this is, like, level one drill, and their barrier is just getting... That went down to, like, two-thirds. Right. Um, there's a lot of moments where like people will just be scared and let me pressure for too long and then their barrier gate is gone and once your barrier gate is totally gone and you can't block against drill you're just you're dead right yeah that chip comes in hot mm -hmm. like all you can really do is like counter assault uh but you can actually uh play around counter assaults by like debating it by a jump zettling over it this will actually make counter assaults whiff oh that's that's interesting. It clears... Does it clear everybody's? Is that universal? Uh... I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> it clears a lot of them, for sure. 
Yeah. And it definitely depends on like spacing and other things. So maybe not like the taller, like the Tager. I feel like mm -hmm. his, his pride pretty high, but that is yeah. And you can always like Zettel out first, and that'll definitely make it miss. Yeah, good point. Um, so in terms of like uh, mix-ups, we already talked about Mane is not really heavy on the mix-ups because lack of overheads. But would you go through the two B stuff? Um, so I grab out of that at one point. Do, are there any other like mix-ups you would try to go for if you, you know, felt so inclined in a match? Not really, it's pretty much just a uh, J2B. There's also like um, like if people are turtling too hard, you can try to throw for a throw reject miss. Or like oh, there's a option select in Blaze Blue, where you do a back A plus B plus C. And that gives you a barrier block if they don't do anything. But if they tried to throw you, you'll automatically throw tech it because you have E plus C right there. But uh, if you input that, then there's a period of time where like... There's like a punishment for the option select in this game. Where there's a window where you just can't input throw tech again. Gotcha. I didn't realize so it'll give you like a counter hit throw basically that they can't escape. This is super left field, but I did not realize how high his shoe platforms were until you were <laughs> the crouching yes. animation. And he's like crouching like a foot off the ground. <laughs> he's so gorgeous. He, he's <laughs> definitely got style. I got to give him that. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, there's no real mix ups. It's mostly just like the countdown of like, if you keep blocking against me, then eventually I'm going to hit level two, level three, and like you're just going to be dead. <laughs> And there's also like a overdrive is the like the burst mechanic of blaze blue you can also use it as like an install oh. and the upside of amanes is that while he's in overdrive he just passively gains drill meter Ooh. until he gets to three uh and he also loses a lot less dr like his drill gains much uh, his drill uh decreases much faster while he's in level three during overdrive so he can keep pressuring you for a long time that chip yeah you, you oh don't need gosh. to mix people up. <laughs> you don't need to mix people up it's like half of his health just went away <laughs> that's wild all right yeah fair enough mix up mix up's clearly unnecessary um yep. <laughs> what are your we've talked about or you've mentioned using frame traps a couple times. What are kind of your go-to, like, your three favorite frame traps to throw in? You Ooh, can interpret yeah. that however you want. Like, most used or, like, the ones you, like, think are the coolest. However you want to interpret it, be my guest. I think 5B Hottykin is one of my favorites. Because when they see you do that, they'll tend to be like, Oh, God, they're doing something. I need to mash. So you can do, like, uh, 5B, 5B. And that can counter hit. Or if they're like con trying to react to the Hariken to hit you before you can reset pressure, you can just be like, okay. And then you do the actual follow up for it, uh, which is a very good frame trap. And when that happens, you get some of your biggest damage. Like 40%? Yeah. 4.3? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Ooh. definitely my favorite frame trap, especially in the corner, because even if they block it, uh, if at level 2 or level 3, they're stuck and blocks them for so long, it's a free pressure reset. Yeah, I was going to say, do those give you like crazy plus frames if they block those? Yeah, yeah. The, the higher the drill level you have, the more plus frames that you get to. And I'd say that my other favorite frame trap is probably 3C Ginga. Because if that counter hits, they get sent way high in the air. And uh, even mid-screen, that works too. Whoop. These combos look very difficult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the, definitely the hardest part of playing Amane, is that um, even after you get a hit, uh, a friend put it that uh, you have to keep hit confirming during your combo <laughs> because 
like there's so many different variations of like each character has a different hurt box and uh they might have get, gotten hit at a different timing or they got hit a uh, close as opposed to far like if you're comboing them with 60 and they're as close as possible the second hit of it will actually miss so if you do your normal combo it will it will, it will just drop so you have to be able to eyeball and constant, constantly react to different changing things that are happening. Man, that's difficult. Oh yeah, I guess my other favorite frame trap is using Ginga on Wake Up. Like, it is one of the coolest things in the corner. Uh, I like to space myself at about this range, I would say, for Oki. And then I'll just use Ginga. So while they're waking up, uh, they'll either wake up into it and you'll be really plus. Or if they try to roll tech or just lay on the ground against it, they'll get picked back up. So, uh, here's an example. Oh, I need a better combo. Here we go. This is my go-to corner thing I'll use. Apart from... Here we just talking about how hard it is to combo with Amane. That's yeah. just like... Straight up launch. It's yeah. So nice. Here we go. This is the spacing I want. If they roll tech, then I'll just uh, reset them into the same situation. Or if they don't roll tech, crap. Good enough. Then it gives you a very plus situation with a lot of different options you can do. Uh, my favorite one that I've been picking up recently is Ginga into Hariken. Because uh, if they try to counter assault you, you're just far enough that the counter assault will miss and you'll get counter hit Hariken instead. But yeah, uh, Meaty Ginga is one of my favorite frame traps. I want to keep uh, keep the Oki train rolling here, but first I just want to acknowledge that I did hear you adjust okay. to something mid combo, and I just wanted to point out that it happened that fast. Like the, the <laughs> oh, that'll do <laughs> in the middle of the combo. It's, like, it's too funny. It's yeah, I like I accidentally got two D six C. So I was like, oh well, I've got to like adapt to that. That definitely happens in matches where I get two D six instead of six two three, and I'm like, well. I still have to hit confirm this. What do I do? <laughs> yep. And then you still made it work. So there you go. Living mm -hmm. proof. All right. Let's uh let's let's keep going on Oki. So Ginga Oki, meaty Ginga hit, really really good. Um, are there any other tools you use for Okazeme with Amane? Oh, yeah. My favorite one because it's just so funny is a uh, you can use Hottie Ken for Oki, where uh basically the combo timer in this game. Uh, works that the longer the combo goes, the less hits, the more hit stun decay affects it. So people can tech earlier and earlier until they can just tech instantly. Uh, but hit stun decay actually affects the hit of Hadiken. So if it's worked high enough, they'll actually won't slide all the way to your drill. Uh, best. Here's an example, I believe. Up. Like that. Oh. So yeah, it creates this mid screen situation where the drill is behind them. So if they try to roll back away from you, they'll roll into the drill and just and take a thousand damage. Uh and if they don't, you can like force them into the drill by making them block or whatever and do a lot of follow-ups. There's some really cool options that you can do uh, to cover the tech directions and just get some additional uh, drill chip damage in. This is, this is really interesting because when you were showing the drills at first, I definitely was like, my first thought was uh, paralleling like Zotto a little bit, Zotto and Eddie throughout Guilty Gear mm -hmm. titles, right? Because drill they have a drill and their drill's, you know, pretty prominent for similar things but it there's multiple examples you've shown where you're working it as like a back wall like a forced corner instead which i think is really interesting like 
That's definitely not how I pictured that tool coming into play, but it seems hmm. really effective at that. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, another Oki okay thing I like to do is uh, Amane's ground combos are usually like kind of small and don't get a lot of damage. So what I try to do is end combos with Ginga. Because uh, when you do that, you can either... There's, there's basically two options of emergency teching and roll teching that you can cover. So uh, if they don't emergency tech, you can pick them back up, get a more favorable situation. Uh, or if they do emergency tech, you can try for something like this instead. Oh. And if they didn't see it, then bam, level three drill. Uh, on either hit or block, you get level three, and you're very close to your win, win condition. So that uh, feels bad to get hit by, I would assume. Yeah, That's... yeah. Uh, Sixty is really interesting the way that it works in pressure, because it used to be uh, in previous versions of Blaze Blue that Amane was in, he could just hold it forever, no matter what. Uh, but in this version, it tries to move towards them for a minute and then goes away, which gives people a few more options to escape it. So there's some characters that if they uh if they emergency tech into the situation, uh, they could escape it with backdash, for example. Uh, I think overdrive activation has enough invincibility to also escape it. Like there's some counterplay, it's not guaranteed. Uh, but there's a lot of different things that you can mix in. So it's not too bad. Like if if they start reacting to it, then you can instead just go for a safe jump with JB. It'll safe jump every DP. And I've uh, recently been uh, experimenting with something. This I, I'm not sure yes. how real it is yet, but uh, for people who get used to safe jump, I'll try cross up J2B. <laughs> hit me every single time. <laughs> so yeah, I'm letting all my secrets out. Hey, but... that's what the show's for. <laughs> you gotta help the rollback generation, right? You gotta show right, the right, DB right. stuff. Mm. So, you know, you've got a good blend here of like, um, kind of reset situations and hard knockdown situations. Which ones do you prefer like to happen in a match when you play? Like, would you rather get in like, the reset zone and start someone over with like that uh 6d or like do you like the hard knockdown put them in a plus room situation and you can go in what do, what do you prefer to happen for your game uh i'd say that the first step that i do is test them on 6d because if they don't know how to escape 6d like the game's just over they can't win or if their reactions are are not good enough to react to 6d then i'll just like do pressure and uh when I do 5B, I'll just mix in 6D. And if they didn't react to it, like, well, you died. And you can also do weird things, like uh, if they're in the corner, you can use the wall bounce on this special to help trap them in your 60. And that in particular is very difficult to escape. And uh, you can do a spicy thing too with that suction that you get. Oh, sh see, it's a little bit tricky. Ah, oh, damn it, I missed it. You can actually follow it up if you get that suction. Almost. Or something that was, like that. That was without a rapid cancel, right? Nope. You do not need rapid cancel. Oh. As long as you get the suction forward on 60. Ah, damn it. There's a lot of micro dashes in the Monai combos that even I miss sometimes. I can definitely imagine that based on the spacing of the normals. That was how much. Yeah, uh, I'll go through like an evolution of. Well, first I'll do like either a knockdown or just a block string, or a wall bounce reset situation into just 60 to test them. Uh, and if they do prove that they're aware that I can do that and won't fall for gimmicks, then I'll start going for more knockdown situations. 
or I'll reset my pressure into just like even on hit into some drills to get a little bit more gauge in. Uh, I try to keep my options as varied as possible because even players who know about the 60 setups, like it's still worth it to challenge them like very sporadically on if they're awake and paying attention because the reward right. is just so huge. You immediately win. Yeah, that makes sense. If you have 50 meter uh, and you don't have any drill gauge and need to make a comeback, uh, it is very often worth it instead of going to o for Oki, going for level three drill uh, because you can combo Hardyken into 60 like this. And then that can immediately get you back in the game. Uh, like the Oki situation isn't great, but like from there on, if they block anything and get forced into a pressure string, they're taking like chip damage, a ton of it over time. Right. Uh, so yeah, not it doesn't quite mean Oki, but it's like you're giving up Oki for something huge for Amane instead. And it's really easy for Amane to combo into it from most situations as long as he starts a juggle. You just do Dixie into Hardyken, Rapid Cancel, 60. I think that definitely qualifies as Oki for a resource character because, like, you know, any resource mm -hmm. character, you want to build the resource when you can. So I, I think yeah. that's fair. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Are you still safe if you make that choice? Like, you know, you might not have the plus frames to go back in immediately, but, like, are you still, like, you're good. Like, you're not in, like, a negative situation where they can. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure uh, you're... I haven't done the math in a while, but I think you're like plus eight. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're plus enough that like you can put a drill on top of them. Uh, like some characters can super it though. Uh, and they can also roll to get away from it. So it's not guaranteed. And like, I like guaranteed set play kind of things. I don't really right. like playing guessing games that much. That makes sense. Uh, so I don't really call it Oki. It's like you're just a uh, you're positive. Yeah, it's it's just an ender. It's an ender. You're safe after you've got good resource. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> Let's talk about the dreaded part of any fighting game. You know, it's always fun to <laughs> exert your will, but occasionally you do have to block. How is Amane on defense? Does he have any tools that help him out on defense? Does he take advantage of any system mechanics? Well, what does he do? So I would say that uh, Amane has two big downsides. Uh, the first is that he's so sluggish. Like, in his, his normals have a lot of recovery. His run speed is slow. His air speed is really floaty compared to others. And that's supposed to, like, offset how good he is at zoning and space control. And his other downside is his defense, unfortunately. He does not have a meterless reversal. He only has a uh, this one invincible super, which is fine, but it also like resets all of your drill gauge. Uh, Amane is also taller than most characters, so fuzzy guards tend to work on him quite well. Uh, so, kind of like New Thirteen. Your defense with Amane is as good as your knowledge of system mechanics. Uh, so there's a lot of instant blocking to try and create gaps that you can mash through. Or barrier blocking to create space. Instant barrier blocking uh, is like a, a super push block that gets them really far. So you have to have a lot of knowledge of their strings to understand like the timing for instant blocks and when you should go for instant blocking so you can mash or barrier blocking just to try and get them away from you and let you jump out. Uh, one good thing about Amani is at least if you get cornered, uh, of all of the characters, he has a great time escaping because he could just like sort of super jump into the air, use the momentum to carry him super far. So like, that's good. But generally, uh, you just don't want to be forced to block with the Mane. You want to be a floaty keep away character as much as you can and control the pace of the game. That makes sense. Um... And the other good thing is a uh, overdrive cancel with the Mane. Uh, 
Like, everybody has access to Overdrive Raid. It does Overdrive, except it has, like, half of the normal duration of it. Uh, but with Amane, like, even if he doesn't get anything out of it, he's gaining Drill Meter, which will help him in his offense once it's his turn again. Does, uh, I'm going to circle back real quick to using Barrier and Instant Barrier. Do those, like, do those have enough pushback that you can start using the longer normals to whiff punish a little bit? If someone hasn't realized that they're pushed out and they're, like, keeping their string going, like, can you capitalize on that well with them? Yeah, I, I would say so. Uh, let me set a... Jen's probably not a great example for us because his normals are too godlike, but yeah. Um... Usually when I'm instant barrier blocking, uh, like you can try to push them out to about this range that would let you do a 1C to interrupt it. Like this is usually the zone where most characters can't reach you with a, a few exceptions. Uh, but usually I'm just trying to get them out uh, because if they want to try and get back in, then they either have to run at me, which gives me an option to like super jump and then set to away. Or they have to instant air dash to get back on top of you, and then I can just anti-air them with 6A. Does that pretty much cover defense then? Limited options, know your stuff, be careful. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately it is, but like, I'm actually used to playing uh, Jubei as a alt character, and Jubei is even worse than Amane. Like, he has zero invincible reversals, including supers and doesn't really have an anti-air either. So that got, that was like some like hyperbolic time chamber training mode for, you have to just get good at blocking. You have to get good at system mechanics. That's um, good for you, builds character. Yeah, and to be fair, like the system defenses are pretty good. Let's let's take a minute and let's see, let's see some combos. Show me some sauce. Let's do, what what's your, I don't know if I want to do your flashiest or your favorite, unless those two things coincide. What do you think? I mean, I already showed my favorite. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have to go flashiest then. Yeah, this is not optimal at all. But there is a period of time uh, before uh, COVID hit and I was going to tournaments where, like, I was like, I don't care that this is suboptimal. I'm just going to, like, run up in your face like I'm going to like I'm trying to throw you, and then I'm just gonna throw bait you. And then if it hits, I'll just do this. Be like, feel bad. Yeah, I was about to say, I I, feel bad. it might not be optimal like in in-game combo damage, but it's certainly optimal in mental damage. There's no way someone like <laughs> no. takes that and is happy for the rest of the set. <laughs> no way. The best, I'll do the go-to one. This is like the most important one I would say is when you have level three. side switch action yeah okay oh the snatch afterward okay yeah that's one of my favorites this other one is going to take me a little bit of time to remember no worries just got to get used to that input that sequence of inputs is really weird Good lord. There we go. <laughs> that is wild. I think you've definitely hit the, the flashy requirement there. We can check that box. <laughs> I almost forgot about my absolute favorite one. And this one is actually really easy. So as a... I said earlier that this super disables your drive. Uh, but there's actually a way to get around it. Uh by rapid canceling it for some reason if you normally rapid cancel it'll still disable it but if you use like the the input buffer that this game uses where it like while you're holding down the buttons it repeats it for like three or four frames or something like that if you hold that early it actually won't be disabled 
tricky. <laughs> so this is my favorite combo. No, wait, we could do better than that. I missed it. <laughs> Lordy. That was me holding it down for literally as long as I can. The game forced me <laughs> to let go. That's, uh, imagine going for something that super is invincible, right? And you just get reversal into that. That's a bad time. Oh, yeah. That's probably like, even though Amani's defense is bad, if you have a hundred meter and do this on them, it's like, oh, I guess I'll side switch you into the corner and get level three and then you'll die. Okay. Man, what a way to do a comeback. That's crazy. <laughs> All right. The, uh, the next question is going to be the last one. Before we go to that, is there anything we haven't talked about yet that you think is crucial to talk about? Is there anything about Amane that like we've overlooked or, you know, just some secret that you know that other people don't know that you think they should? I will say that when I was in the first like two or three years of learning Amane, I had a roadblock with how to play neutral. Uh, because it just seemed like there were so many strong characters with great anti-airs and my buttons seemed just not good enough. It was too easy to miss. And at some point I realized sometimes just not doing anything is better than doing something. Like you don't have to jump and then it's like do, start doing Zetos and, and air dashing and all. You don't have to do that. You can just jump back. And make them like wait and see what their reaction to that is going to be like what are they going to try to do in response to it can i just answer it with an anti-air or an interruption and uh think of amane's air options as a mix-up essentially like we call neutral neutral uh because it's different from offense but technically throwing buttons out in neutral can be a like, you can think of it as a mix-up, too. Like, if New throws out 5D, it's a mix-up of... Did you try to stay on the ground? Because if you did, then you have to deal with 5D. Uh, and for Amane, it's like... You have all these different air options. If you go through all of them, and you run out, then it's really easy pr to predict where you're going to be. So sometimes restraint is the best thing that you can do with Amane. Like, mix up your options and don't let yourself run out because then people will know how to respond to you. If that makes sense. Your air sense. options are a mix up. So don't use all of them. Don't just blow through all of them as soon as you can. Dawn of the Bread, someone came to you tomorrow and said, hey, I'm thinking about picking up Amane, but you know, I'm not super sure about it. I'm on the fence a little bit. What would you say to them to push them over the fence? Why should someone play Amane in Blaz Blue, Blaze Blue? Not Blaze Blue, Blaze Blue. Very important. Central Fiction. I mean, that's a pretty easy answer. Who else does this? <laughs> Who else does more damage to you on block than on hit? Are you kidding me? That is plus, a really great sell. Yeah. Like, who? Else? What other character in any fighting game is like that? Like, sure, there's other characters who do high chip damage, like MVC2 Storm or whatever. But what other characters that like that's all they do? That's their entire game plan. Just like causing that anxiety of dear god, I can't block this anymore, I'm gonna die. Like the other thing is like what character has like combos as as beautiful as Amane? You can't think of them, like come on. Like even just like the go-to like anti-air combo is just so beautiful. Like, look at that art in motion. All of those buttons. Yeah, Amane, uh, definitely not lacking in the style department. He has that part down pat, no doubt. So the way, like, the ribbon forms into a fist at the end of things is so cool. 
Would you call that a ribbon? Yeah. Is it a ribbon? Is it a scarf? I don't know what the technical term is here. Yeah, it's the it's the scarf that animates around Amane's person. Is it animates to form different sort of objects. That like this this is a dragon. If you get a close look at it, it's actually a dragon's head. That's super cool. Like he's so beautiful. Everything about him is just oozes elegance. Look, he's so carefree. <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> <laughs> Well said, well said. All right. Well, we've come to the end. Thank you for coming on the show. Um, yeah, we did it. First Central Fiction episode. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs>